Hey, it's Tim here. In today's video, Tableau have added one of the most important features in Tableau Prep, stratified sampling. If you don't know why it's important, I'm going to break down sampling in Tableau Prep in this video, and then we're going to explain why stratified sampling is going to take that to the next level and make Tableau Prep more performant and stable as you work through your data. To find out more, as ever, let's get stuck in. So when I first heard about stratified sampling, frankly, I didn't know what it meant. I'd never come across this term stratified sampling, and that maybe shows to you know my experience. I'm used to working with all the data all the time. I've never really had to work with the data set where I've had to sample it in the past. And so what I did is I reached out to Google and I came across this really nicely explained example on Kaggle. Now, uh, this has been put together by Jardel Nascimento. I hope I've said that correctly. And he's doing it in the context of Python. And he actually has a really nice diagram here that explain the concept of stratified sampling. And essentially, what you're doing is you take your uh, population of data and then you choose a dimension that you're going to use to group that data with. In this particular case, uh, if we look at this section over here, um, it's using gender. So he then splits his data set into two halves. And then from those two halves, there's a random selection done. And then you get to the sample essentially. And so you're sampling your data, but you're using some sort of grouping to make that sampling more representative of the challenge that you're looking at. So the context really matters here because in the context of Tableau Prep, what we actually care about isn't necessarily the output because Tableau Prep always runs all the data through the output. What we care about here is when we're doing data prep, being able to see what's going on with our data whilst using the sampling setup. So what I've done is I've taken this exact data set that Jardel has used here and I've put it inside a Tableau prep. It's essentially information about credit. And one of the things I like to sort of contextualize here is that sampling is one of these features that you probably don't even realize is going on in the background until you work with a large enough data set and you realize you're not seeing all the rows. So what do I mean? Well, if I click on the input here, you can see that I have some settings and a setting that maybe you're not familiar with if you're new to Tableau Prep is this option here data sample. Now, when I go and click on that, this is split up into two halves. Firstly, you have the number of rows that are going to be brought in, and then you have the method at the bottom. So the row selection is, is actually what's going to choose which rows come in. So the number of rows you bring in and the selection method are actually two disparate things. They're not the same thing. And so what Tableau have added here in 23.3 is this option here, stratified sampling. And so how does this work? Well, at the moment, my data set isn't actually that large. So if I go ahead and click on clean one here, you'll see that I see all 2000 rows. And so you're probably thinking, well, why would I even bother using this feature in this particular set? Well, if we look at our data and Tableau Prep is fantastic for this, you can see that each of these sort of groups here have a pretty you know, decent spread. But if I'm going to work on, let's say, a multi-million row data set inside of Tableau Prep, um, the default column, I'm going to want to make sure that I sample my data and I see enough representative examples of this default behavior. And you can see most people in this credit data um, don't default on their payments. And so it's actually a very small percentage, 14%. And so if I was working on, let's say, a 3 million or 10 million row data set and 14% uh, of my data was this default, in the sampling scenario, you might actually get an underrepresentation of the rows that are about defaults. And so if you're trying to analyze defaults in that setup, in the context of the whole data set, you're going to be slightly blind because essentially you won't be sampling as many rows as you want. So how do you force Tableau Prep to sample a, a sort of a better spread of this particular attribute in the data set? So let's go do two things. Firstly, I'm actually going to go into this credit data, data sample, and I'm going to limit this to just 100 rows. So let's go ahead and select 100. So you can just see uh, the effect of what I was just saying there. So we'll set it to 100. That would actually run in the background. You won't see anything happening. And then if I go back to clean one, you'll see that we get the same sort of spread. But now if I just hover over this particular record, um, I have 13 rows, so 13%. So we've gone from 14% in the entire sort of data set down to 13% just because of the way it's sampling. And so if I'm going to work on this data set and I want to look at these sort of uh, 13 default payments, I'm really only working with 13 rows. And in those 13 rows, I might not have the necessary dimensions and behaviors that I want to see. So how do I get Tableau Prep to split this up in a more representative way? This is where stratified sampling comes in. So let's go back to the input here and we'll go back to the data sample. And now that we're here, 
What we want to do is make sure that we go to this option here that says stratified. Now, when I click on that, you'll see that it gives us this option here that says client ID. And what it's essentially asking is, hey, how are we going to use the specific um, columns in our data, dimensions in our data to understand how we're going to spread this? And so we'll go ahead, click on client ID, and I'll say, I want you to use default as the method of stratification here. And so what that will do is we'll say, okay, these are the two groups. I'm going to go and select 100 records, but I'm going to try and make sure that they're balanced, more balanced than they are at the moment, given the spread of the data. So if we go back to clean one and we have a look at our spread, now look at that. You see we have zero and one. We have 50 rows from that set and 50 rows from that set. So now in the context of data prep, I'm actually seeing a more representative split of the options across this specific column because I'm trying to build something for the defaulting behavior in my data set. Now, yes, it's not a representative sample, but then when I run this data through in its entirety, so when I go up here and I, for example, select run and I run the flow, if I was, if I was to add an output here, for example, and I was then to go and hit run, what this would actually do then is run the whole entire data set, even though my sample is set up slightly differently. So this feature is really just for working inside of this view and working in a fast way. Now, why would you not just run all the records through Tableau Prep? Well, if you've worked with Tableau Prep for a while, you'll know that sometimes you do get performance issues when you're working with really large amounts of data set. I think it's just the way Tableau Prep is built. I know it's built off web technology in the background, something called Electron, but I'm not a technical person. I don't know too much about it. What I do know is that when you try and push too many records through, you start to get these sort of issues and bugs that pop up just because of the sheer amounts of processing that's going on. And depending on your resources and your computer and a bunch of other things, again, I have no idea about, um, that can cause issues. So sampling allows you to do two things. It allows you to keep your uh, row numbers down. So if you're working with a many million data set, you can keep that right down but also make sure that the spread of what you're getting through is representative so you can work with it. And now that data sampling can be done across a, lots of different columns. I would always recommend you maybe use this on the column that are kind of, you know, best represents the thing you're trying to analyze and its spread, if that makes sense. So if I was analyzing, let's say, uh, more demographic information about default payments, I might choose to point this towards a demographic field so that I get a representative spread of certain age groups. All these sort of things are things to think about. But what you're really trying to do here is improve the performance and make sure that what you're seeing actually makes sense and allows you to do the data prep you need rather than changing the output. I'll keep repeating that because I think sometimes people think that when they sample, it's not going to come through the output. That's not what happens when you hit run. When you hit run, all the records come through. So that is stratified sampling in 23.3. Hopefully this explanation has been clear enough. If there's anything you'd like to add, maybe I've got something wrong or you work in statistics and you want to go nerd out on some of the context of what I've said, let me know in the comments below. I'm still learning. So if you can help with that, I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.